I'm going to go with a bit of a freehand approach for the sanding. As I mentioned before, the two sides really do not need to be exactly the same because there'll be a great chopping board in the middle. So it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of variation between them. So I'm just going to smooth them off and make it a, a pleasant shape to look at. Something a little bit different. Next it's over to the chop saw to trim the back eggs of them, get a nice square back and get them approximately the same size. Then a tiny wee round over, I think I've got a 3.2mm bit in just to knock that sharp edge off. Wouldn't want any customers catching themselves in there, would we? So that's the sides, the upstands pretty much taken care of. Now I need someone for the base. That'll do nicely. Quick trim down on the table saw just to make sure they're uniform width. I've been informed by the powers that be that we need three spans to support the larger boards that we make. And they are anything up to 55mm thick. So I'm going to cut three base pieces at 100mm wide, which will allow me to accommodate the larger board, the 55mm plus the width of the upstands that I'm using that can that be 12, 14 mil. So I'm going to do the layout pilot holes for the screws before I put any roundovers or bevels on these base bits because it will make it that much easier for me. So I've got 100 mil piece, 50 mil to the center. I need to allow for a 50, maybe 55 mil board. So if I go 28 mil from each side of the center line, that's going to give me 56. And then I take distance from the back, half it up, rough enough, transfer that to all three, do the same with these marks. Perfect. So if I take my edge piece that I'm going to use, pop it there, put a little line, but I can come in about a quarter. A little like clamping pressure just to keep it in place. So I mark the screw holes. Tiny little round over around the top. A little sand to get rid of the pencil lines. I did forget to put counter sink on the bottom. So I'm just going to drive that screw in. So I can just feel the point of it sticking above the surface of the 
base and then that will act as a locator and there we have it now I've just got to rinse lather repeat a few times So that's three large done and two of the smaller. And just before I move on to the last thing that I want to make out of the waste that I've got, offcuts that I've got hanging around, I just want to mention somebody, one of my patrons sent me an email to say that he was going to be visiting Cornwall down in St. Burian actually, and he was going to be attending a craft fair. Well, he was going to have a stand at the craft fair. And if I'm passing, would I like to pop in and say hello? Well, couldn't resist the opportunity. As I said, he's a patron, so I wanted to thank him for his support. So I wandered on down and this is what I saw. David, an absolute pleasure to meet you. Could have stayed for hours if I wasn't getting a dig in the ribs from you know who. But the quality of your work speaks for itself. You've done some fantastic work and I really think you might want to consider a YouTube channel yourself. So absolute pleasure, David. Keep up the good work. So the last thing I'm going to make in this video is a little stand to display the slate table mats that I've been engraving. And for that, once again, a little off car, off of the shelf. I'll start by trimming up the one rough edge that's left on it. Then I'll cut that down into 200 mil pieces. On the piece that's going to be the base, I'm just going to put a little knock that edge off, a little chamfer on the edge, if you like. So the back piece is going to stand about there, and I want just there so that's where I went center of a little groove that it can sit in got a half inch bull nose bit in the table I just want the tiniest of little indents right about there And then the very last job, a little bit of spray lacquer. This is plastic coat satin finish. Satin. Plastic coat satin finish, which I think is absolutely superb. there you have it pretty darn simple but the brilliant thing is that it was waste it was going to go in the bin or in the fire and now it's going to have a long and fruitful life what could be better anyway thanks so much indeed for watching i hope you liked the video if you did give us a thumb if you loved it hit the subscribe button and don't forget the bell
see you next time on the GT Woodshop. Ta-ra.